Good morning. How are you today? Good. Um, so this is where it's Singapore Investment Week. I just want to make sure that me and you are in the right room. Raise your hand if you're actually looking to make more money. Okay, pretty much so. And raise your other hand if you want more money and time. Brilliant. Because that's exactly what trading can give you. It can give you more money and it can give you more time. Because you do not need more time to make more money. And one of the reasons why that is, is because it's your money that makes you money, not you that makes the money. We are grown up, we're taught and brought up that we have to go to school, we have to get the good grades. Um, I know some of you already know me because you've met me last week, but for those of you who don't, I'm actually half Chinese. My mama is from Hong Kong. I, grew, I spent four years in Hong Kong. I can speak very, very poor Cantonese. <laughs> See, if you are here because maybe you are thinking that life should give you more than you've currently got. Perhaps it's because you work every single day and there seems to be more month at the end of your money. Or maybe it's purely because you're just not seeing your family enough and the whole point of working hard is so that you get to spend more time with your family. Maybe the other reason why you're here is because you know if you can nail this and get this right, then you can actually start swapping your time for money so you don't actually have to work all the time because your money is going to make you money. Because we're brought up, as I said, that we must work hard. That's certainly what my mother told me. Go to school, work hard, get good grades, get to university. That was just a, that was just a prerequisite. You, you had to be a university graduate, as far as my mother was concerned. And unfortunately, being the number one son of the number one son, that was also my duty. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to university, and I spent many, many years feeling quite guilty about it. Until I discovered that I don't actually have to work all the time. Because when it comes to trading the markets, guys, if you take something like the currency market, unlike the stock market, which is opening and closing on a daily basis, the currency market is open 24 hours a day, Monday to Friday. Which means, if it's always open, it's always moving. If it's always moving, then our money can make money when we are not there. How many of you actually would like to make money without actually doing anything? <laughs> you lazy bunch of people. You've got to do some work to it. You've got to do some work. And so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... <laughs> wow! I'm going to do What I'm going to do over the next 30 minutes or so is to share with you the five, my five golden secrets of successful trading. You see, tr by the way, how many of you have actually done some trading before? Can you just raise your hand if you've done some trading? Okay. For those of you who haven't done any trading... In fact, those of you who have done trading, raise your hand if you think trading and gambling is pretty similar. How many of you think trading and gambling is quite the same? Well, only me. Can't be just me. Good. Because I'm glad you got that attitude, because the difference between a great trader and a poor trader, in other words, one who makes money as opposed to one who doesn't, <laughs> is that the trader follows rules. There are rules in trading. How many rules does a gambler follow? None. Apart from, oh, uh, I don't know, apart from never gamble more than you can afford to lose. But I've yet to meet a gambler that follows that one religiously anyway. As a trader, we follow a set of rules because as a trader, we view risk first, not reward. The reward is a byproduct 
of managing your risk. Every time you go into a trade, you should have the attitude of saying, look how much can I afford to lose, as opposed to, look how much I can afford to make. If you want to make money, you have to risk money. But when it comes to the markets, guys, the risk is the only thing you can control. You can't control the profit. You can't control the news. You can't control the economy. You can't control a change of government. You can't control interest rates or unemployment rates. And considering all of these things are the, are the major things that move the markets, if we already appreciate we can't control those, let's look at the one thing we can control, which is our exposure into the marketplace. Does that make sense? Raise your hand if that makes sense. Brilliant. Okay. So you see, I'm going to share these five rules with you. And if you absolutely, and they're very simple, just I'm going to share those five rules with you. And if you follow those, those same five rules will apply in anything you do regarding your investing or short term trading. It doesn't matter, it's just for the currency market. These set of rules apply to every single trade or investment that you make. So, let's talk about the Forex market first. Why do we trade Forex? Well, Forex, by, for those of you who don't know what Forex is, Forex is the uh, currency pairs trading against each other. So unlike a stock, uh, actual, quite a way you actually buy it, or the market is buying it, it's going up, or people are selling it, it's going down. This is these are a pair of currency pairs trading against each other. Something like the euro against the American dollar, or the American dollar against the euro, or American dollar against the Singapore dollar. Just, it moves like that all the time. And the good thing is that 80, over 85% of the market is moved by the banks for us anyway. So unlike any other investment market or asset class, one of the beautiful things about trading the currency market is that it always moves because it has to move. The banks are moving it every single day, up or down. And we can take advantage of that, and I'm going to show you. But as regards to the actual size of the market, currently trading around 4.5 trillion USDs every single day. Now, I don't know if anybody in this room actually knows what $1 trillion actually looks like, let alone 4.5 trillion that's just floating around every single day. Now, the good thing about the four and a half trillion floating around every single day, you know, obviously not today, but, you know, on the Monday to Friday, it's all we actually have to do to make money out of this is not go for the big payout, the big lottery win. All we really have to do is every single day stick your hand up and take a little bit out. Now, do you think if... I spent the next 30 minutes giving you a bit of financial education. Do you think each and every one of you might be able to, every single day, go and put a little bit in your basket? Because if you keep putting things in your basket, your basket grows. It's not going for the big payout all the time. There are places called casinos for that. They have said that the Forex market is one of the world's largest casinos. But if you want to make money, you don't treat it as a casino. You treat it as a business and as an investment business. If you compare it to just one stock market, if you compare it to the New York Stock Exchange, for example, the New York Stock Exchange trades around 39 to 40 billion a day. That's just one market. Compared to four and a half trillion, and we think stock markets are big. <laughs> This is why it's so good to trade it. It's three times larger than all the stock markets put together. And I know over the last day, you've been hearing a lot about stock markets. But if you add them all up, this a daily volume is huge. Which means what to us? Which means we can trade 24 hours a day. So for any of you who are currently working, there isn't really a reason, once you learn this, not to trade. Because we've all got 24 hours in the day, haven't we? And if the market is always moving 24 hours a day, at some point during each day, there should be an opportunity for us to take a trade. And we don't have to spend hours and hours by the computer. And I'm going to show you how. 
So it's very, very liquid, and we can take more opportunities. Why do I believe everyone should be a trader? Well, as I said, there's nothing special about me. It's because I did all that work. I did my wife, my mortgage, my two children, my 12 hours a day. But I knew that if I kept on doing that, that's all I could do. Does that make sense? Because that is a job. And we've heard a lot about job over the last two days. Job, J-O-B. Just over broke. <laughs> Every month, just over broke. And my wife was very expensive. <laughs> She's now my ex, even more expensive. <laughs> However, I still got my two children which I want to look after. And the thing is this, if I was working and working and working, not only do I not spend time with my children, but I've only got an X amount of disposable income. So I had to do something which allowed me to work so I can pay my um, dues, my dues as it were, you know, my living expenses, but also allow my money to grow. And trading was allowed to do that for me. So, you can control your finances because you're the one, unlike going into the stock market on a long-term investing, you have the choice of getting in and getting out. You can get in and out of a trade literally in seconds. You choose when to go into a trade, you choose when to come out of a trade, but far more importantly, you choose when not to trade. Because an art of a great trader isn't knowing what trades to get into, it's actually knowing what stupid trades to stay out of. Because if you can understand which ones to stay out of, those are the ones that are going to lose your money. So stay away from them. That's just common sense. So you can control your finances. The barriers to getting into it are very low. You don't need a great education. You can be any sex. You can be any age. As long as you have access to a laptop, internet, and some money, you can actually get into the marketplace. I train people all around the world. And... The one good thing is this, it doesn't matter which part of the world you come from, everybody can trade. It is literally a 24-hour global market. South Africans, I spend a lot of time in South Africa now, and they are being able to realise that South Africans, after all these years of oppression and apartheid, can now trade and make as much as any other Western world because of the marketplace. It is truly inspiring. You can trade with a few thousand dollars just to get started. But even today, the most important thing, guys, is that if you learn how to trade by what we call percentage gain as opposed to monetary gain, then you will just keep rewarding your account over and over again. In fact, if you do it correctly, whatever you've got today becomes irrelevant because over, even though you're trading short term, your long term pot will be huge. And I'm going to again show you how to do that. So you can now take control of what you do. The market is open tonight or tomorrow morning. You guys can jump in it straight away if you had a bit of basic knowledge. So, what does it take to be a great trader? First and foremost, education. You need to learn what to do. It's not that difficult. The difficult part is the implementation of it. But actually, just knowing where to get in and where to get out it's pretty easy. I was told many years ago when I first started trading, I said, Gary, trading really isn't that difficult. Seriously. When it goes up, you buy. When it goes down, you sell. When it goes sideways, just leave it alone. It's like a bus and a train. It'll keep on going and going and going. But learning it to do is far more important. Just learning some of the technical skills. Implementation. Implementation. Yes, that's important, but as long as you do. Practice, 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 practice. Practice makes perfect. Does it? No. <laughs> Have you ever seen me play golf? I practice and practice and I'm still rubbish at it. However, if you knew what to do and you practice the correct way, that would make you better, wouldn't it? But if you didn't know what to do and kept on practicing, you're practicing the wrong thing, aren't you? So practice doesn't make perfect, it just reinforces what you know. And once you've pressed it, then you've got to put some money into an account, guys. The more money you make, the more money you got, the more money you make. The more money you make, the more money you got, the more money you make. It goes on and on and on. And the only way you can give it back to the market is by taking stupid trades. So the key thing when I train people how to get in and out of the market is actually telling them what not to do. If I show people what not to do, 
then everything else that's left is what to do. So we're never looking for a needle in a haystack. What I'm showing people is that the rules, how to be disciplined, how to not gamble, how to walk away from the rubbish so that what's left is the right one to take, the ones that's going to make you money. So, the simplest way to make money is, oh, the simplest way to earn more money, increase your return upon investment, because again, this is an investment. In, well, the simplest way to invest your money. These are not the only way, guys. It's, in my opinion, the simplest way to do things. And make your money grow is by compounding. If you think about it, how much effort do you have to put in for compounding growth? None. Because your money's doing it for you. Compounding is the easiest way to make money. Any of you who have a mortgage or a credit card know that's exactly how the banks are making money. So traders use compounding to our advantage. You see, if you learn to trade, as I said to you before, by percentage gain, then your account begins to grow. So let me give you an example. Uh, well, let me ask you a question then. Let's say you had $10,000. It doesn't matter, US thing, it doesn't matter. You had $10,000. Tomorrow, you go to a bank, any bank of your choice, and you deposit that $10,000 to the bank. Everybody with me? Everybody understand that, yes? Yes, good. And then in one year's time, in 2014, you go back up to that same bank, and assuming the bank is still there, by the way, <laughs> What percentage gain would you expect upon your account in this country? One, two percent maybe, if you're lucky. One? So one. So, oh, gone. Oh, by the way, did you have to pay tax on that? No, so that's one percent net. Wow, lucky guys. Ten thousand, one percent, one hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Divide that by twelve. That's not even a cab fare. Yet most of us go, OK, that's a great idea. Have some more. But here is the irony. Here is the irony. What do the banks do with your money? What do they do with it? They trade it. They trade it in the market because 85 86% of all the money on the Forex market is traded by the banks. Your money. And the irony is that most banks, most trading floors of the banks will make easily between 10 and 15% per month on their money as a trading floor. 10 to 15% per month. So while they're making all this money, for the privilege of using your money, they were going to give you 1% at the end of the year. That is the biggest legal money laundering system I've ever seen in my life. So do you think if you knew how to do exactly what the banks did, you'd keep the banks into touch, wouldn't you? <laughs> so if you could earn 1% per year from the banks, but I could teach you how to do 2% per year, doing exactly what they're doing, for half an hour's work a day, you're doing better than the banks, are you? The problem is, I'm in Asia. 2% per year? Puh. No one likes 2% per year. Not if I've got to do the work. I want more. Much, much more. But how much more? Well, guys, the thing is to be reasonable. The thing is to be reasonable. And really what you need to work out, guys, is what do you want as a return? And when it comes down to compounding, this is the most important part. If you were trading and you could get something like 6% return every single month on your money. You're only risking no more than 1% of your portfolio, your account, per individual trade. No more than 1%. As short-term momentum traders, we are in and out of a trade anywhere between two hours and, let's say, 10 days, depending on what strategy you're trading. Okay? But you'd risk 1%, maybe, to, let's say, make 1%. All right? If you could make 6% consistently per month, that's just going in, spending 30 minutes per day, trading the markets, which is open all day long, then what would happen to your money is this. It would double year on year on year on year. 
double. Assuming you don't take any money out, whatever you've got in your account, it will double. Just by doing 6% per month. Remember the banks are doing what figures per month? 10 to 15. Individual traders like me and fund managers like me were doing double digits per month. If you were to do 9%, so you're still nowhere near the experience that we have, then you will be tripling your money every single year. You can't help that, by the way. You can't say, no, that's too much, I want less. 9% will triple your money. If you can do 12% consistently per month, then you will quadruple your money. Year on, year on, year. So how does that work for you? Let me give you an example. Well, let's say you had $5,000, say. $5,000. That's all. Month zero. And you just knew how to get in, how to get out, and just made 6%. You weren't being greedy. No, in fact, you just want to do 9%, middle of the road stuff, yeah? 9%. So if you do 9% per month, in 12 months' time, that $5,000 will now be what? $15,000. Everybody follow, yes? Because we're tripling it. But the key thing is now this. In, four, in 24 months, as in two months, two years from today, you're doing exactly the same. You're not working any harder. You're doing exactly the same you did in month one, in two, and three. What would that 15,000 now look like? 45, 50, wouldn't it? Let's do 50 to make sense. In 36 months, 150, 48. I'm assuming you will still be trading in four years' time if you're making success. So in four years' time, what's that, 150, 450K, nearly half a mil? You can do the sums from there. That is how traders make money. That's how you can make money. That's how people, the nearly 20,000 people I've trained how to make money from wealth creations make money, through compounding. It's a hard start for a few months, but you never risk more than 1% every single time. It grows. You risk one, take one. Risk one, take one. As you get more advanced, you don't risk more. That's just silly. But you risk one, but take more. Does that make sense? You don't risk one to take one, you risk one to take more. So, the most important thing is this. is to follow the rules. You want to make money? You have to follow the rules. What do you have to do? Follow the rules. Sorry, what was that? What do you have to do? Follow the rules. Don't follow the rules, you get hurt. Any game tells you that. So follow the rules. So, we make our money by direction. Judging our direction. And a good thing about what we do, guys, and what you can do as, as traders and investors, is that you can trade the markets no matter what the economy is doing. It doesn't matter if the, if the economy is great or the economy is poor. You take something like Euro, the Euro zone at the moment, do you think they're up the way they're doing really well or do you think they're doing really badly? Okay, I think badly. Americans, well, it doesn't matter what the Americans do, they, when they run out of money, just print more. It doesn't matter to them, but the good thing is this. We make money where it goes up or we make money where it goes down. In fact, we make money three to five times faster when it goes down. Why? Because people buy through greed but sell through fear. No one wants to be holding on to something when it's going down in value. As an investor, you understand that. As a trader, oh, brilliant. Short, sell, 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 sell. Because as long as we are putting pips in the basket, as it were, and making money from the currency move that we don't even have to adjust, we just let it go, then we can make money. So, how do we make sure that we don't give money back to the market? Well, here are the five rules. Are you ready for the five rules, yes or no? Do you want the five rules, yes or no? Right, so here are the five rules. Have an elegant entry. What do I mean by an elegant entry? <laughs> an elegant entry means that you want to glide into the trade. You don't want to jump in. You want to glide into the trade. You only want to get into the trade if the currency is doing exactly what you expect it to do. The good thing is, it isn't that difficult because it can only go one or two ways. 
You can either go that way or it can go that way. So as long as you know which way it wants to go, as long as it does what you expect to do, you get into the trade. So, let me show you on this. Let's just say that the currency pair is going up in value and then it kind of stifles itself and get, kind of gets stuck. All right? The thing is this. The majority of the move has been in which direction, guys? Up. Now it begins to move sideways. Sideways means indecision in the marketplace. Indecision is good because it has to make a decision. It can't stay there. So it has to make a decision. So what it's done, and some of you may have already heard these terms, they've got a line up here and a line down here. This is the line of resistance and that is a line of support. Have you heard of that before? Yes or no? Yes, brilliant, okay. So, as it starts to move sideways, that is a good time for us to start looking for the trade. Now, we can now go one of two ways here, can't we? We can either go up and buy, or down and sell. How many of you in this room would think, just from this, that we should take a buy order and buy it at some stage in the future? None of you. Okay, how many of you think we should sell it? One of you. How many of you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about? <laughs> Thing is this, as the prices start to move up and down, up and down, up and down, guys, what's going to happen is that more often than not, it will leave a period of, 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 uh, leave a period of um, indecision in the same direction it went. So there's a bigger chance it's going to go in an upward direction. So if it's going to go in the upward direction, we want to collect it and start buying it as it goes up. Does that make sense, guys? Yes or no? So therefore, if we're pretty much certain, and you can't be certain in this market, it's going to go in an upward direction, we want to get into that trade. But we only want to get into that trade if it does what we expect it to do, which in this case is move up. So our elegant entry, guys, will be placed just above that line there. Because unless it goes through that line, I'm not going to risk any money. If it does go through that line, I want to be in the trade. And that is what we call an if-done order. It is by far the simplest, safest way to trade the market. You only put your money at risk if it does what you expect it to do. So if you look at something like here, we have the market moving up and there's a period of indecision, we could put an entry order with our broker and says, if it moves through there, get me into the trade. If it does not move through there, leave me alone. What is the worst thing that can happen to you if you do not enter the trade? Nothing. You can't make any money, but you certainly can't lose any money. Our role as traders, your role as investors is to make money, not lose money. So the second thing is, once you've got any, uh, an, an entry, is to have a stop loss, a protective stop loss. That does what it says on the tin. It protects your loss by stopping you out of the trade. It does it automatically, so you don't have to worry about it. So where does the stop loss go? Well, the stop loss will be quite simply if it went in the opposite direction. So we wanted to go that way, didn't we? But what happens if it did that? Whoops. What happens if it did that? It's now moving in that direction, isn't it? against what we thought. Do we stay in it? No, we want to get out. We don't want to risk any more than our 1%. We want to get out. Boom. That's where our stop loss should be. Out we come. Automatically. Done. Don't have to worry about it. The maximum we would have lost if we'd done our right one would be 1% of our account or what half a percent of our account. We're done. Well, let's go and play with something else. So your protective stop loss, guys, would be under the way you're going if you were going to buy. This is on a technical level, like a moving average. So it could use something like that. The third element to it then, guys, after you've got your entry and your stop, would be to have a profit target. If you don't know how much money you can potentially take out of the trade, why are you entering the trade? Would any of you go to work if you didn't know how much you were going to get paid? Would any of you run a business if you had no idea what you could make? <laughs> then why would you invest or trade like that? So we use, a, we use a profit target not based upon what we want, 
but what we can expect to get based upon history. Because if history does one thing, it taught us that history always tends to repeat itself. So we will look at the charts and tell us very simply, where did the boys and girls last make a top? And if they last made a top there, that could be our potential target. So we can have a potential target sitting above based upon previous history, not what we want. The tendency for a gambler is to go, well, I think I want that today. So I'll go for that. That's not a guarantee. But what is nearly a guarantee is when you can see the market's done that before, go out. The fourth one would be to assess your risk to your reward. If you go into the trade, you are going to risk money, aren't you? It's a given. You are going to risk money. Uh, how much money will be up to you, depending on how good your risk management would be. But as soon as you enter the trade, your money is now at risk. You must be prepared to lose that money. Would you agree with that, guys? Yes or no? Because if you can't be prepared or, not, or uh, can't accept that you might potentially lose on this trade, then you shouldn't be trading in the first place. So control your loss from doing so. So if you know what your risk is, then, and you know what your profit target is, then the first thing you need to do is work out whether the reward is bigger than the risk. If the reward is bigger or equal to your risk, then that makes a viable, sensible, logical trade. If the reward was less than your risk, why would you take the trade? You will want a reward of less than you're risking. That is a gambler's mentality. It's also a way of some of the traders out there, it's what I'm, not, I'm not a great believer in scalping the market. A scalping on the market to me is what I call the spray and pray method of trading. The spray and pray method of trading is where these amateur traders will actually put as many trades out there as possible and they'll spray it all out, spray all their money out in the marketplace and they'll be sat at home all by themselves behind their screen praying that some of it's going to make them some money. That is not the way to trade. The way to trade is to make sure that you have some form of plan. Trade with a plan. It only takes 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day. That's all you need. But rather than trying to scalp or to, to gamble your money away, knowing that where you can get in and where you can get out is far more important to do so. And the final thing, final secret, guys, is to trade size. Know exactly how much you are going to place on that trade. If you know exactly how much you're going to put on the trade, you know exactly how much you're prepared to lose. So if it does go wrong, you are expecting and accepting there is a loss of X amount of money. 1% of your account is, is the most I would recommend anyone to trade. Now, I do have guys now that I've taught who are on trading floors around the world who will do a maximum of 2 to 3%, maximum, occasionally. But no one ever goes over 3%. And this is the reason why. Let's just say that you had a system, a strategy, that gave you an 80% success rate. 80%. Proven 80% as well. That is a pretty good system. Would you agree with that? Yes or no? 80%. Brilliant. Well, as a trader, I don't see the 80%. What I see is the 20% failure rate. Because that's, that's a given as well. If the 80 is a given, so is the 20, isn't it? So if I know there's a 20% failure rate, I'm going to accept it. So let's just say that, uh, oh, by the way, how many, how many of you in here, let me ask you a question then. What do you think the average trader places per trade in percentage of, of their account? What do you think they risk on an average trade? 10%, 20%, 50%? Less? The average is around 10% globally, 10%, which is nuts. 
Because if it goes your way, brilliant. <laughs> you've made 10% or more. But if it doesn't go your way, you've only got nine more chances before you've lost all your money. That's a gambling mentality. So let's say we didn't do the average. Let's say we, only, we were very conservative and we did 5% risk per trade. Just five. That's less than the average, but a little bit more than what Gary says. Because Gary sounds pathetically small. And you took this strategy that gave you an 80% success rate, which also gave you a 20% failure rate. Question is this. When do the 20, if you took 100 trades, 80 are going to go your way, 20 are not. When do those 20 come? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Could be anywhere, couldn't it? So could it, if it could be anywhere, it could come in the middle. The problem is, if it also comes at the beginning, your 20 trades that guaranteed to lose have just lost you 20 times 5%, which is 100% of your money, which means you can no longer take advantage of the 80% guarantee to make your money. Whoops. Get too excited. <laughs> so risk management is very, very important, guys. The money is a natural byproduct if you understand how to trade size. Your target, if you're on this particular one here, guys, for example, this is the same trade, this is where our entry was, this is where our stop loss was, and this is where our target was. Preset based upon history, based upon the strategy. Each one of these bars is four hours. So in a four-hour market, out of a 24-hour market, this whole bar represents four hours of movement in the marketplace. We went into the trade on this bar here. By the way, if we had set an order for the trade, we don't have to be anywhere near it. Does that make sense? Because we've given instructions to the broker. Brokers are a necessary evil. We need them to uh, do what we do. But they're the brokers from it, guys, okay? So this, they will take us into the trade. Four hours, we're in. Eight hours, 12 hours. In 16 hours, the market's moved and taken us out of the trade. Because we had a predefined stop loss, a predefined target. Everybody understand that? You, 16 hours, will probably still be in bed or at work or having a cup of tea or whatever. The market is making you money. All because you set an entry, you set a stop, and you set a profit target. If you trade size correctly, you let's say you took the average person of $10 per pip. Now, not everyone will do $10 per pip. That will depend on your account size, on the strategy, on the risk, etc. It's a very easy calculation. But if you were to do a 10 buck per pip, as this made 50 pips, it moved up price in 50 pips in 16 hours. 10 bucks per pip at 50 pips in your basket, you've just made 10 times 50, 500 bucks. How many of you, raise your hand if you like to know how any of you can make 500 bucks in 16 hours? Brilliant. That's too long for most of you, yeah? You want it faster. Faster than that. That's understandable, guys. But the only thing is, as long as you make it, it's yours. Does that make sense, guys? It's the quickest and safest way to do things. Is there risk? Yes, there is risk. You control the risk by knowing how to control the risk. The market will take care of everything else. The market is the one thing that will keep on moving and keep on going up or down. So, do you think now with that little bit of information there, guys, you can actually look at potentially going into a trade and making some money from that? Has your education increased a little bit more on how the Forex market works? Brilliant. Because what I suggest you do is this. Come over to Singapore to teach a handful of people. And I'm going to suggest that if you want to know more on how to make money immediately, is to come to our two-day trader course next weekend. Spend two days showing you exactly how I trade, exactly how my guys trade, and how you can get into the market within 24 hours. If you make up 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 100 bucks, 30 bucks in that week, you've still made money from the market instantly. How you keep it is up to you. How much you make is up to you. We can show you how to do it. I'm going to give you three professional strategies on how to get in, get out, and take the money. You only have to trade for half an hour a day. I'll show you how to make more money in 30 minutes than most people do in a day. 
because your money makes you money, not you. You set it, you forget it. I'm what's known on trading floors as the lazy trader. I prefer to call myself ruthlessly efficient because I just set my target, set my orders and get it set up for them. So I can show you how to do that. I'm going to show you the secret signals of how to read a chart. A chart isn't that difficult, guys. Listen, I'm, very, I'm not very IT orientated. If it's there, I'll show you exactly what to look for. Ignore the rest. The signals that the pros won't tell you. Traded psychology and risk management. Your risk management will completely depend upon your psychology. In the mindset, 80 to 90% of the success of your trading well, has nothing to do with the market. It's to do with you up here. Do you up here. See, there's a chap called Robert Diltz in the 70s. Very quickly, let me just show you what it is. He created what I call the water mill of wealth. And everything here starts with belief. Your belief. Good, bad or indifferent, it's your belief. But if you've got good belief, you will take good action. Because you believe in it. You'll do it. You will give good time and resources to achieve your goal because you believe in your actions. Does that make sense so far? Yes or no? Good. And therefore, if you've got great belief, take great action, you put time, which in our case is 30 minutes, resources, put some money into a trading account, then the results you get will also be good. Good action, good belief, good action, good results, good payday. Make sense, everybody? But the key thing is this. Psychologically, once you've had good results, what does that do to your belief system? Just reinforces you can do it. So you do it again, over and over and over again. But on the other side, if you have pretty poor belief, and go, oh, it's all right, Gary, Gary, you've been doing it for years, I don't know what to do, I can never do this, then what type, is that good belief or bad belief? It's bad belief. Then what type of, act, what type of action are you going to take? Poor. You don't believe it. So you won't do it. Will you put any time or resources to it? No, you'll just see what happens. See what happens. See what happens. How's that been going so far? So what kind of results you get? Poor. And if you take poor results, what does that do to your belief system? It means I can't do it anyway. So we'll teach you the psychology of how to risk manage and how to do it properly, guys. The value of those courses that other people will pay from around the world is over $2,000. However, I'm in SIW week, Singapore Investment Week. This is what I'm going to do. I've got a room for 150 people. I've got over 100 people registered on that course already. For those of you who want to be taught how to trade, buy a trade and get in the market, because of this week, if you can get to my booth, you can have it for nothing. Two whole days of trading, learning how to trade from that. All you actually have to do, and promise me this, take the education I give you and use it. Don't just take the education and don't use it, because it will change your life. Come and register at the booth. My booth is at 6B, which is next to the F&B part there. As I said, I've only got X amount of numbers in the room to fit the room. But I'll be there. We'll be teaching you for next Saturday and Sunday at the Excelsior Hotel. So, I hope that's been educational, guys. I hope you got something from it. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your week.